only on the Business Channel. The following is a paid commercial program with the guests paying a fee for their appearance. This is the symbol of balance, the mark of perfection, the golden mean ratio of the ancients, the symbol of unending growth. This is Charting the Market with Gene Morgan. Here in the heart of the Los Angeles Financial District, Gene Morgan uses the most sophisticated analytical tools to seek investment balance and perfection. Charting the Market is a complete technical market summary, helping you to decide when to buy, hold, or sell. Charting the Market analyzes real estate, futures, the stock market, oil and gas recovery, 24-hour world currencies, America's most complete daily financial overview. Charting the Market with Gene Morgan brings you to the dawn of a new financial age, an age where knowledge is power. And now, Gene Morgan. This is Richard McGinnis standing, standing in for Mr. Morgan, who is out of town on a due diligence exercise today. I'm pleased to present to you the fact that my special guest today will be Ms. Ann Harris-Stokes, Senior Account Executive of Long-Term Standing with Mr. Morgan at our firm, Gene Morgan Financial. Well, the Dow Jones Industrial Averages, the most watched market indicator of them all, uh, tried to rally earlier in the day, but there was a damper put on things by an extremely sloppy two-year Treasury note auction. Nonetheless, the Dow managed to hold up a modest gain, closing up 6.75 points to close at 3298.45 on the day. Intraday high was at 3319.75, intraday low at 3291.66. And of the 30 stocks that comprise the Dow Jones Industrial Averages, we find that 19 were up, 9 were down, 2 were unchanged. 10 did change by a full point or more, 4 of those to the upside and 6 to the down. Looking at the Dow stocks, we can see that Allied Signal gained 1 and 5 eighths points. American Express lost 1 and 1 eighths points. Uh, Boeing lost 1 and 3 eighths points. Caterpillar gained a point and a half. Goodyear Tire gained a full point. Merck Sharp and Dome down 1 and 3 quarters. Minnesota Mining and Factoring losing 1 and a quarter points. Procter and Gamble losing 1 and a quarter points. Sears losing 1 and a half points. And Disney up $3 a share. Looking at a volume analysis on the big board, we can see that volume uh, remained brisk, but did contract slightly from the previous reading. Volume on the big board stood at 289,166,000 shares. The second of the Dow Jones components we'll look at today, as usual, is the Dow Jones Transportation Index. And we can see that the Transportation Index is held on to a healthy gain today, closing at 1489.49 on the day. That's up 11.28 points from the previous reading. Intraday high was a 1496.55. Intraday low was a 1478.82. The third of the Dow components, which we review here daily, is the utility index. And we can see that the Dow Jones Utilities Index lost 0.37 points to close at 224.15 on the day. Intraday high was a 225.03. Intraday low was a 223.90. Now we'll look at our intermediate market timing tool of the broad New York market viewed as a whole. That is the McClellan Oscillator. McClellan Oscillator component today actually lost one point. We had a one point change in the oscillator and it was to the downside. The 10% component was a plus 221. The 5% component was a plus 166. That gave us an oscillator reading of a plus 55. That's versus yesterday's reading of a plus 56. The companion to the McClellan Oscillator is the McClellan Summation Index. The McClellan Summation Index continued to rally to the upside today, uh, as opposed to the action in the oscillator, closing at 24.52. Yesterday's reading was at 23.97. So you can see that the action remains positive with the longer term view, although today's action did take some of the energy out of this recent rally. We'll go overseas and see how they did in Japan last night. Looking at the Nikkei Cash Stock Index, we can see that the Nikkei closed at 16,492.63. That's a gain of 205.18 points from the previous reading. Intracession high overseas was 16,535.47. Intraday low was 16,216.11. 
Returning to our view of the domestic action, we'll look now at the New York curve. The American Stock Exchange Market Value Index uh, continuing to work strongly to the positive. 411.59, the closing reading today, and that's up 2.07. Intraday high was 412.09. Intraday low was 409.59. Looking now at the New York Composite Index, we can see that the New York Composite Index, in the vicinity of its most recent highs today, up 0.06 only to close at 242.53, basically unchanged, up less than a tenth of a point on the day. Now we'll look at the over-the-counter market as measured by the NASDAQ Composite, and we can see that the recent rally in over-the-counter stocks has taken this index up and off the charts yet again. Today it held on to a modest gain, Closing at 707.13 on the day, and that's up 0.18 points on the day. A virtual nothing action, but continued positive nonetheless in the NASDAQ composite. The companion to the NASDAQ composite is the NASDAQ industrials, and it too, in likewise fashion, has continued to surge in recent trading. Today, however, the NASDAQ industrials gave up just under half a point, closing down 0.44 to close at 756.61 on the day. London Gold, second fix. We find the 3 o'clock fix in London's trading, closing up $2.45 an ounce to close at 3.30.90 on the day. Let's see how that move is reflected in New York. We'll look at gold futures on the COMEX. We're in the April 93 delivery month. And we can see some technical evidence of the beginnings of a near-term bottoming out in gold uh, going today as the action reflected that overseas. 331.70 the close for an April 93 delivery of gold. That's up $2.20 an ounce. Intraday high was a 332.30. Intraday low was a 3.30 exactly. Looking, continuing our review of precious metals and industrial metals, March 93 silver up 0.01 today to close at 3.702 on the day. Intraday high was 371.5. Intraday low was at 368.5. The third of the metals we'll review here is the March 93 high-grade copper contract. High-grade copper today up 0.90 to close at 100.45 on the day. Intraday high was a 100.90. Intraday low was a 100.40. And you can see that we had a gap to the upside in that metals contract. Now we'll look at our interest rate instruments. The first that we'll begin with today is the March 93 Treasury Bill contract. And you heard my reference at the top of the program that the two-year note auction was sloppy. Uh, bills today closing down 0.01 to close at 97.01. Intraday high was a 97.04. Intraday low was a 97 exactly. It's premature to conclude that the recent rally in bonds is over, uh, but looking at the fundamental evidence that's coming out, one has to pause to wonder. We'll go a bit further out in maturity. We'll look at the March 93 Treasury bonds, uh, down 19 30 seconds to close at 106 and 20 30 seconds on the day. Intraday high was a 107.20. Intraday low was a 106.20. This puts the yield on the 20-year 8% coupon bond at a 7.36%. March 93 municipal bonds mixed into the downside, 97.22 on the day, down 0.16. 98.10, the intraday high, intraday low stood at 97 and 22 30 seconds. Now a measurement of overseas time deposits of U.S. funds, the institutional favorite, the March 93 euro dollar contract, losing 0.04 to close at 96.62 on the day. Intraday high was a 96.68, intraday low a 96.62. Please stay in view for more market action. We'll look now at the foreign currency markets. Foreign currencies, as always, will start with the British pound. March 93 delivery is the current contract month. British pound losing 158 ticks against the dollar today to close at 153.18 on the day. Intraday high was a 155.98. Intraday low was a 152.70. 
Deutsche Marks, German Marks, again for March 93 delivery. And we can see it's very interesting here. The next few days of trading will tell us whether or not we're going to set off this double bottom in the Deutsche Mark. Deutsche Mark today losing ground, closing down 11 ticks against the saw block at 62.89 on the day. Intraday high was a 63.38. Intraday low was a 62.74. We look at that very important foreign currency, the Japanese yen. And again, for March 93 delivery, we can see the yen was up yesterday in dramatic trading. Uh, today, it wound up closing down 14 ticks to close at 80.96 on the day. Intraday high was 81.20. Intraday low was 80.68. The Swiss franc, March 93 delivery, and again, as we have with the Deutsche Marks, you can see that we're very close to setting off a double bottom in this currency, but it hasn't happened yet. So don't jump the gun if there's any of you out there that are, are playing with these contracts. March 93 delivery, down 39 ticks against the dollar, 68.54 the close. Intraday high was a 69.22, intraday low a 68.43. The U.S. dollar index, and we can look at the U.S. dollar index for March 93 delivery, and we can see that it actually gained ground, a modest amount of ground, closing at 91.40, up 0.16 on the day. Intraday high was a 91.70, intraday low was a 90.78. Crude oil, sweet light crude is what they call it for its low sulfur content. West Texas is where you find it. A Mar for March 93 delivery, a 42-gallon barrel of West Texas Intermediate Crude gave up a penny a barrel today, closing at 19.65 on the day. Intraday high was 19.80. Intraday low was a 19.54. So you, you can see, thank you, if we could go back to this for just a moment, that we've come up into the vicinity of overhead resistance in this negative trending contract. We have not surpassed it yet. And it'll be curious to see with the fundamental developments of foot what occurs in the next several days trading. So we're at an interesting juncture with many of these futures contracts. We'll look at what many people view as an inflationary indicator, the CRB index. CRB index is a cash-based indicator of tangible goods. 199.63, down 0.03 on the day. 200.03, the intraday high, 199.51, the intraday low, and you can see that in recent trading, the CRB index is taking out its lows to move further to the downside. The major market index is another index we'll review. The major market index today closing down 0.12 to close at 345.56 on the day. Intraday high was a 349.22, intraday low was a 345.01. Now we'll turn to our review of stock index futures. First in our review, the S&P 500, a reference to the basis, which is cash for the S&P 500 universe of stocks. We can see that the S&P 500 index today closed at 439.95, and that's down 0.06 from the previous reading. Intraday high was a 442.66. Intraday low was a 439.54. Looking how that be reflected in the March 93 delivery month, we can see that the S&P's lost 0.65 points today, closing at 439.70. Intraday high was a 443.05. Intraday low was a 439.15. Interesting and treacherous action in many of these contracts, I'd like to make note. March 93, Kansas City Value Line Exchange Index. Kansas City Value Line today down 0.40, closing at 490 on the day. Intraday high was a 403.70. Intraday low was a 400 exactly. Continuing in our review of the stock market related futures instruments, the March 93 New York Stock Exchange Composite Contract closing at 242.30, down 0.20. 243.95, the intraday high. 241.90, the intraday low. When we come back from this important message from Spectrum Information Technologies, with whom we have a long-standing association, please join me as my special interview guest will be Ms. Ann Harris-Stokes, Senior Account Executive with G. Morgan Financial, who's here to share our message to you about a company we've recently begun sponsorship of, that is iTech Attractions. So please stay tuned. I think we've got something here. Oh? A hot company, Spectrum Information Technologies. And what are they in? High-tech growth, retail acquisition, and a new interface that links cellulars to laptops. Now, wait a minute. This uh, company... Uh, here. 
Spectrum Information Technologies. And they've matched laptop computers with cellular phones? Exactly. A portable office that works anywhere. Spectrum. How's their R&D? Solid. This interface is just the first in a line. We have to call this company. Make the call. But keep talking. A universal design that works for all cellulars and laptops. And their market potential? 100%. Skip Whiteson says Spectrum could be a 90s hyper-growth company. The only game in town. American Products Worldwide sales a very hot lead. Do it. Did I mention they're working with NEC? Call 1-800-FOR-SPCL for more about Spectrum Information Technologies. The company, their products, and their future. I'm pleased to announce that our special interview guest here today on Charting the Market is Ms. Ann Harris-Stokes, Senior Account Executive with Gene Morgan Financial, our broker-dealer. Ann Harris has been with Gene Morgan Financial for several years, and I know that Ann Harris's opinions are widely respected in the financial community. Ann Harris, last summer you undertook as a senior member of Mr. Morgan's staff to assist in the arranging of private placement venture capital financing for iTech attractions. We recently completed the initial public offering of iTech attractions, which we think was successful, and we've asked you to come here today to tell us some of the new things we've learned about what's happening since that offering has been funded. Now, I know that uh, one of the concerns that many of the shareholders in iTech attractions have expressed and expressed going into the public offering was how Branson, Missouri's facility might perform in the off-season. Uh, Missouri is known as a place where the winters can be a bit cold, and there was some concern that come the winter snows, things would dry up. Comment for us a little bit on this and what's happened in Branson over the course of the last several years. Well, interestingly enough, right now we spoke to uh, Kelvin Cullimore, the president of iTech Attractions, not two hours ago. And right now in Branson, Missouri, it's about 50 degrees, cold and clear, actually not very cold. And it's interesting that they're going to start extending the actual theater facilities um, run during the year in Branson. Up until now, they've been running about an eight to nine month season, but the new season, rather than opening in March, will actually open this year, the weekend of February 19th and 20th. In fact, I understand that they've already pre-sold and sold out a number of those shows set to open that weekend, and obviously, interest is not flagging in Branson, Missouri whatsoever, Richard, at this time. Well, I know that uh, the things continue, and one of the things that, that's become known to me is that I'll take a chance to share is that in 1988, when Branson was just starting the boom times, uh, the season was basically five months. It was a summer season in Branson. It was a tourist-based season. 1993, they're projecting an 11-month season. Now, I know that uh, one of the concerns about the development of Branson is how the infrastructure is keeping up. We saw it on 60 Minutes, the traffic stacked up for miles. And sooner or later, that can be a turnoff. I know that sales taxes in Missouri fuel a lot of that infrastructure expansion. Can you share with us a little bit about what's happening in terms of making the infrastructure to support this type of growth? Sure. Well, I grew up in a small town, Richard, a town called Sebastopol in Northern California. We had about 4,000 population, which is just about the size of Branson, Missouri. And I'm still trying to imagine what it would be like to have a town that suddenly has 30,000 hotel rooms and enormous seating capacity in these 25 large Las Vegas type seating theaters and it's just astonishing to me. So when you talk about infrastructure I can tell you it's sort of a, a two-pronged thing. First of all in terms money is still flowing in they are also getting enormous cooperation from the locals on all levels because the extraordinary growth taking place. In fact the sales tax revenue I can tell you for fiscal 1992 increased 44 percent of sales tax revenue in the town of Branson. I can think of no other place that didn't have a Congress mandated tax increase that had anything, anything oh, close to that. Heaven but forbid. I, I hope I'm not uh, <laughs> jumping the gun there out of Washington. But, um, in any event, Branson, Missouri did enjoy that spectacular increase and with the extension of the season, they're actually projecting that in 1993 there will be more visitors to this little town, this country western town in Branson and the Ozarks than all of the Hawaiian Islands put together. That's astronomical to me. That's a, a huge figure too. That has to be in excess of six million people I would expect coming through a town of 3,700. It, it, it is in excess of six million. And the, the amazing thing is, when Kelvin Cullimore first put together his break-even analysis, he based it on expecting 2% of four million people would go to his theater with having that theater operating approximately 300 days of the year, approximately six shows per day. Well, obviously, that 2% figure immediately becomes a much, much larger 
And when we look at the profit analysis, this is what gets really exciting about this stock. Mm -hmm. I mean, why should you buy iTech Attraction stock? Don't buy it because two months from now they're going to build a theater. Buy iTech Attraction stock because that theater breaks ground in March. That theater opens in September. They still have three and a half months left of the season for people to go and buy tickets. And quite frankly, they could end up hitting their break even in just a couple of months. And what does that mean? You've got a stock that doesn't have a whole lot of shares public. You've got a stock that potentially could show some extraordinary earnings potential in their first full year of theater operation. And as I said, they have less than a million shares public. And I think that what you're saying is very important because we talk to people every day that say, why should I get involved with the stock now? Why should I buy this stock now? If mm -hmm. the theater isn't going to post earnings uh, for several quarters, I can wait. And the message, one of the most important messages we can bring to you is that money moves in advance of events. You've heard Mr. Morgan say that time and time and time again. And money will move into issues in the expectation of things to come. And that is why we think it's important at these uh, relatively reasonable evaluations, uh, you take the opportunity to accumulate the stock if your objective is long-term capital growth based on this type of earnings stream. The earnings stream is incredible. Now, you talked a little bit earlier about the hotel situation. Uh, I understand there's a couple of new things there, and I understand that uh, we want to talk about them. I, you did, I heard about a high-rise, and I'm having a hard time envisioning okay. what a high-rise is in Branson. A high-rise in, in Branson, well, it's, it's probably not too, too dissimilar from uh, the high-rise I recently saw up in Ashland, Oregon. You know, the old hotel's about four or five stories tall. But seriously, that is another evidence of the expanding infrastructure. When you think about in Los Angeles, a high-rise is no big deal. But in a town that I think the highest building there has been about four stories tall, maybe five stories tall, suddenly they're looking at a hotel structure with 500 rooms. Obviously, the fire department has all been taken care of there and made the appropriate expansions to handle that. And when I asked Kelvin Cullimore the question, he was sort of taken aback and he goes, well, well, yes, they have taken care of that, as a matter of fact. I'm glad you asked. And I know from a small town with a volunteer fire department, obviously they have professional firemen now in Branson, but it is, it is an important question. Well, and the government has been extremely cooperative and fast-paced in its efforts to accommodate the expansion, which is something else that you have to look at as you perform your due diligence. Well, 44% increase in, in, in sales tax revenue, I'd be cooperative, too. Oh, I think they're incentivized. This, this is all taking place, and I, and I want to want to impress upon the audience that money moves in advance of events. Make a decision, own a company that you can see is going to have profits. I mean, we look at you know, all the cellular issues that are going to make profits someday, maybe in the future. Future, future, future growth, and they're moving now. We look at other kinds of industries that they say, well, you know, they're doing this, they're doing this in their industry, they're going to build this, they're going to make that facility, and then their profits can arrive on this day. I'm telling you right now, profits will arrive in this company in the next nine months. That is simply where we see this happening in this company this year. It came out at 550 per unit. That's one share of stock plus one warrant. We had a conversation with Mr. Morgan. Should we buy the stock? Should we buy the unit? Should we buy the warrant? He makes the observation the warrant is trading on pure premium. It's a very speculative play. The stock right now is essentially trading at its issue price. It has traded at a higher price. There's not a lot of stock available. If you want to accumulate a position enough to count, you better start now. You better not wait till the stock hits 7 or 8 or $9 a share, or you're going to be looking at another situation like we had with Benton Oil and Gas just a couple of years ago, where the stock came out adjusted for splits at basically $1.25. And even at this day, where it's trading substantially down from its all-time peak, it's still at $6 a share. Well, I personally believe that a 400% gain in three years is a pretty gar darn good return on your money. We believe iTech Attractions will not only meet those expectations of profitability in owning the stock, but actually exceed them. And the reason for that is this. The day this company went public, its business plan was farther, farther along than Benton Oil and Gas. At this point, obviously, Benton has accelerated very much. We're very pleased with that issue. But iTech Attractions has the, the horse is farther out of the gate. That's the whole point. The stock is farther along. A lot more of the business plan has been established. A lot more yes. of the game plan has been set in place. And we know that that's important because it will help them advance their growth prospects mm -hmm. even further. Now, if a person's interested in this as a growth portfolio, something that we run into every day is that people don't seem to have an understanding that J. Morgan Financial has made the commitment to bring this type of opportunity to you, the viewer, consistently for years. And Mr. Morgan has made that commitment over the course of two and a half decades. Now, why should somebody interested in this type of a growth issue do business with Gene Morgan Financial? Tell us about that and then tell them how. 
a lot of people ask me on the phone, you know, well, can I buy the stock through you? And I say, yes. And they say, well, can I buy the stock somewhere else? And I say, absolutely. You can choose where to put your business. Let me give you a couple reasons why you should be putting your business on the issues that Gene Morgan Financial follows at Gene Morgan Financial. We are a full service commission broker. We charge full commissions and you get full service. And what that boils down to is if there's something happening in the price of your stock up or down, you don't just get a discount on a commission because you're not going to get that through us. You get me. You get Richard. You get Chris Finuti. You get John Thomas. You get Michelle Parton. You get your own broker, your own broker at Gene Morgan Financial, who is as informed on this issue. And you might want to call our office right now if you'd like more information on iTech. We'll send you the research information. Area code 800-468-6329. Area code 213 6221234 if your broker is Alby Meltz give a call to our office if your broker is Deborah Stevenson give a call to our office if your broker is Barry Nestani give a call to our office because our brokers are full service brokers thank you Richard thank you and I hope that you'll take the opportunity to find that out for yourselves again our guest has been Ann Harris Stokes senior account executive thank you very forthright and very informative thank as you Richard always. I'm going to move into the market summary on the day and looking at the summary of technical evidence we can see that the Dow Jones Industrials held...